So, in this example, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to provide you with is a distinction f plus g of x, which is also known as f of x plus g of x. Okay? So be aware, guys, you might see either notation for you. All right? So just be aware of both notations. Now, so when we have f of x plus g of x, um, basically what we're doing is we're taking each function and we're just going to combine them. We're going to add them. So the reason why I wanted to cover some of these problems is because rational functions, you guys probably have forgot from your Algebra 2 days how to combine these functions. Okay? So just remember, guys, when you're combining functions, you have to have common denominators. Here is x. Here is x minus 2. Now, when we think of multiples of numbers, the multiples of x would be x, x squared, x cubed, so on and so forth, right? But the multiples of x minus 2, it gets a little bit more confusing, because what are really like the multiples of x minus 2, like x minus 4? Like, it kind of gets a little more confusing. So rather than even trying to think about that, we know that the product of two denominators always gives you a common denominator, right? Yes? Like 1, 6 plus 1 over 2. Would you guys agree with me 6 times 2 is a common denominator? It's not the lowest common denominator. 6 is the lowest common denominator. But if you multiply them, that always gives you a common denominator. Like, for instance, 3 and 2. If you multiply them, you get 6. That is a common denominator, right? So rather than trying to think about the common denominator, when you have binomial expressions like this, just multiply them. And I like to write them on the side. LCD equals x times x minus 2. Now what I'm simply going to do is multiply the top and the bottom or the bottom of each equation, you get my LCD. So over here, I'm going to multiply by x minus 2. But whatever you multiply in the denominator, you have to multiply in the numerator. And then here, I'll multiply by x over x. Okay. So now I obtain x minus 2 all over x times x minus 2 plus x over x times x minus 2. Well, guys, back in your algebra, back in your arithmetic days, 1 third plus 1 third equals 2 thirds, right? So as long as you have the same denominator, you now can just combine the numerators. x plus x is 2x minus 2 all over x times x minus 2. Now, could you multiply your denominator out? Could you? Yes. But why is it helpful not to? Because, guys, what, are, what was the next question I said we are going to do? We are going to have to find the domain. And if we are going to find the domain, we know we're going to want our denominator to be factored out anyway. So it's good just to leave it like that. So when we're finding our domain, we've got to say, all right, what's going to make our denominator equal to 0? right? Or we don't want it equal to 0, so I'll use do not equal. So we know that x cannot equal 0 and x cannot equal 2. I am shortcutting some of my algebra because we've already gone over some of that. So now I need to write my domain where the domain is all the numbers except for 0 and 2. So your domain would be negative infinity to 0, union 0 to 2, union 2 to infinity. OK? So that's exactly what you